In this short little video, I'll show you how to make barbed wire out of floral wire. I'll tell you a couple of tips and tricks along the way, and lastly, I'll show you a couple of ways you can use it in your terrain. To make the barbed wire, you need two strands of floral wire, or just make a loop from one strand, and then you twist it. You'll want to use an electric tool for this. You can use your fingers or stick a pen through the loop and twist that, but you'll want to use the drill. It's tedious the other way. Just stick both ends of the wire into the drill, then take it for a spin. It's up to you how much you want to twist it, but I find that if you overdo it, it'll start looking like rope. I tried twisting two different sizes around each other, thinking it might look like the miniature barbed wire you can buy in a hobby shop, but it didn't make much of a difference. Next up, we're gonna make loops. It's a good idea to have a miniature around so you can compare the scale of the loops. Find a cylinder of some kind, like a pen or a tube. Here I'm winding the wire around the sharpie. The diameter was a bit too small for my liking, so I wound the wire around a small spray bottle instead to make the diameter larger. It's easy enough to adjust the size, even though it actually holds its shape quite well once you've made the loops. Now you can add barbs to the wire if you want to. Take a small piece of wire and wind it around the main wire a couple of times. Then cut the ends to a fitting length. I tried using different sizes of wire. I prefer using the same size as the main wire. They'll be loose, so you can add a drop of superglue to fix them in place. I will, however, recommend that you don't add the barbs to the wire unless you're making a diorama or other display piece that no one is going to touch. If you're making barbed wire for wargaming, you'll just end up with holes in your hands and sleeves, or even worse, scratching the paint off your miniatures you'll probably want to keep it in place somehow. Generally speaking, you'll want something to fix the ends to and have something run through the middle of the coiled wire. I'm going to make a wooden stand to hold the wire in place. First, I break off four four centimeter pieces of coffee stirrer. Then I glue two of them together at a 90 degree angle, which leaves me with two crosses. I cut off a fitting length of a wooden skewer for a connecting piece and then I glue it to the center of one of the crosses. Seems like superglue doesn't work that well with wood. I crank up the old hot glue gun instead. Before gluing on the cross to the other end of the connecting piece, I make sure to add the wire so I don't have to struggle with that afterwards when it's closed off. After a bit of paint, it looks like this. I wanted a rusty look, so I painted it in a brown and orange color. I glued the ends of the wires to the crosses, so the coil isn't just hanging from the connecting piece. I think it looks better this way. You could also just paint it in a metal color, like I've done here. In this tiny piece of terrain, I just pushed the wire into the basing material, so it's stuck there and not going anywhere. You could also add the wire to another piece of terrain. In this example, I've added it to a building by running a wire through the coil to hold the wire in place, and then I tied it around the building. If you want to see how that building was made, check out this video. If you want more tips on crafting, join the cult by subscribing to the channel. If you have any questions, comments or suggestions for future videos, leave them in the comments. Thank you so much for watching, have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.